Hello again. Um, today I'm going to show you how to use the acceleration equation uh, to calculate an object's acceleration. Remember, um, from Monday, we learned that acceleration is the change in an object's velocity over time. Okay, so we're going to look at the difference in the change in the velocity divided by time. And remember, since velocity includes a magnitude, a number, and direction, acceleration is also going to have a number and direction associated with it. Okay, so remember, the ways that you can change acceleration, similar to velocity, is the object can be speeding up, slowing down, or simply staying the same speed but changing its direction. Okay, so let's look at the equation and practice a problem, um, practice calculating acceleration. All right, so here is the equation. Remember, you will always be given the equation on any test or end of course test that you take. And A for acceleration, VF, that stands for the final velocity, the ending velocity, the uh, velocity that the object is moving um, at the ending point, okay? Then you subtract the initial velocity. Initial means the starting velocity, okay? And that's not always zero. It could be any number, um, but it's the starting velocity. You're going to subtract um, the final minus the initial and then divide by time is how you use this equation. Okay, so let's do a problem together. Okay, we're not going to use a triangle on this one. Um, any question that you have should be simply solving for A for acceleration. So we just need to practice um, substituting into the equation. Okay, so let's say that um, we have a race car velocity changing from 0 meters per second to 50 meters per second in a time period of 5 seconds. And we are trying to calculate the car's acceleration. And this is um, one of the problems in the PowerPoint that we posted on Monday. So, as always with any problem, let's write down what you're given and what we're trying to solve. So, it tells us that um, the velocity is, one velocity is zero meters per second and it's changing to 50 meters per second and it takes five seconds for this change to occur. All right, so we know that five seconds would be the T. That's your time value because we measure time in seconds. All right, we have two velocities. We have zero meters per second and 50 meters per second. Um, and both of these have a direction that says along a north straightaway. So there's our direction. All right, um, so it's going from zero to 50. So the starting or initial velocity would be zero. Okay, again, the problem says it changes from zero to 50. So the initial would be zero. The final velocity would be 50 meters per second north. Okay, and it wants us to calculate the car's acceleration. So I'm going to take the equation. I'm trying to solve for acceleration. I'm going to take the final velocity, which is 50. I'm going to subtract the initial velocity, which is zero. And I'm going to divide by the time, which is five seconds. Okay, so when you calculate this, touch this in your calculator, um, 50 minus zero. This one's easy. You're going to get 50 meters per second divided by five seconds, or seconds, uh, oops, not cancel, okay, and you're going to end up with 50 divided by five, so 10 meters per second squared, okay, and that would be the acceleration of the race car and remember, sometimes you don't always see this included, but technically acceleration does have a direction to it. So 10 meters per second squared toward the north. And that would be the acceleration of the race car. All right, let's do one other example. Okay. And this one, we're looking at a roller coaster, and it said a roller coaster is moving at 25 meters per second. At the bottom of a hill, three seconds later, 
It reaches the top of the hill moving at 10 meters per second. What is the acceleration of the roller coaster? So once again, the time is easy. We know that seconds is a unit of time, so it took three seconds for the roller coaster to have this change in velocity. Read the question carefully. It says it is moving at 25 meters per second. That's the starting or initial velocity. That's VI. Okay, it's cruising along. We pick up in the middle of the ride. It's going 25 meters per second. It starts up a hill, and at the top of the hill, it's only moving 10 meters per second. That is the final velocity. Okay, you guys, if you've ridden a roller coaster, you know this. You're at the bottom. You're going really fast. As you head up the hill, you slow down slightly. Okay, and it wants to know the acceleration. So again, plugging in, you always do final minus initial. So velocity final, which is 10 meters per second, minus the initial velocity, which is 25 meters per second, divided by time, which is 3 seconds. And then you're simply going to use your calculator to do the math. So 10 minus 25 is going to be negative 50 meters per second. Okay, that's important. Um, it's okay to have a negative number divided by three seconds, and that would give you negative five meters per second squared. And remember, the direction would be up the hill. And that is the acceleration of the roller coaster, or we might say the deceleration of the roller coaster. Okay, so notice we calculated two accelerations. One is positive, we got the 10 meters per second squared north, and this one we got a negative 5 meters per second squared up the hill. It is okay to have a negative acceleration, okay? You're always going to plug in and do the final velocity minus the initial. Sometimes that means you end up with a negative number. All that tells you is that when you get a negative acceleration, that means it's slowing down, the object is slowing down, it's a deceleration. Okay, if you get a positive number, that means the object is speeding up. Okay, so always don't just do the big number minus the small. Do the final velocity minus the initial. And if you calculate a negative number, that simply means that the object is slowing down instead of speeding up. And that's all there is to acceleration. I hope that helps.